Hey everybody, welcome back to the second last part of this tutorial series, the Character Creator to Unreal tutorial series. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is exporting our character into FBX format and finally importing it into Unreal. And then uh, messing around with the materials a little bit, making sure we're getting, or we're getting the best results. So first of all, what you want to do is make sure that you have all the motions you want to export in your Perform Editor. So I have this taunt motion that we just created in the last tutorial. If I play it back, <sighs> let's see we get some nice uh, facial animation there. And our character is going to give a nice taunt there. All right, so that's the motion we're going to export along with our walk, idle, and sprint. So let's go ahead up to FBX export. And you can also use a Control X hotkey. And file name. We're going to call this character Tomb Lady. Oh, let's capitalize that. Tomb Lady. There we go. Now, in order to export into Unreal, we need to include the geometry. Uh, we can also use a target tool preset here uh, for the game engine Unreal. And we're going to include our, we're going to export our geometry separately from the motions. So I'm going to deselect include animation for the first export. And we also have the options with the new version of 3DX to, a 3D exchange to remove hidden mesh. Uh, we covered that in the first tutorial where you can actually remove the character's skin underneath the clothing. So it's uh, saving some resources there. We also have the option to remove head opacity, which fixes uh, a lot of the head opacity uh, map issues. But we won't select any of these right now because I'm going to show you how to manually fix uh, the second one anyways in Unreal later on. So let's just go ahead and include the geometry uh, for this particular export. I'm going to save it to a folder on my desktop called Temporary Motions. And I'll just go ahead and press OK. And this round we're just exporting the geometry again. Uh, successfully exported. Good. So let's go ahead and export again. And this time we're going to select Include Animation and we're going to select save one take per file. Let's keep the naming consistent as well. We'll call it uh, Tomb Lady again. And uh, make sure, of course, that you have save one take per file selected. Now in uh, 6.2, you need to select include geometry. However, in future versions, we will um, do away with the need to select, uh, to include the geometry. That would maybe be in 6.3. So in the future, if you're looking at this from the future, you may not need to select this if you're using 6.3 or above. Anyway, so let's go ahead and uh, export all of those motions to our temp motions folder again. So this is going to export those four separate motions. And after this is finished, we will no longer need to be in 3D Exchange and everything will be exclusively in Unreal. So I think we have uh, one more to go. There we go. Successfully exported. So let's go ahead and close 3D Exchange down. We don't need to save it. So here we are in our Unreal project, and this is a Dirty Lobby uh, scene asset from one of our developers, Decksoft. You can find this in the marketplace. I may put it in the description below as well. A nice looking uh, Dirty Lobby, and uh, I kind of got some sun coming through the windows there. Anyway, so what we're going to do is, in the content folder, I'm going to right click and select a new folder. And we're going to call our folder Character. So this is where we're going to keep all of our character stuff. So let's double click and go into the character folder. And then I'm going to go to my desktop and I have this temp motions folder right here. And we have our lady, uh, tomb lady.fbx and all the corresponding motion files right here. So what we're going to do first is simply import in the tomb lady.fbx. Now we can go over to our Unreal project and, you know, just select import over here. That's uh, maybe a little bit easier. And instead of clicking and dragging, we'll go to our desktop temp motions and tomb lady.fbx. Go ahead and open that, and then we have all these cool looking, uh, cool looking import options. Now, because we're only importing the mesh, we need to make sure that we select import mesh. For skeleton, we don't need to select a skeleton because it's going to generate one for us. We need to make sure we select use to as, uh, to, uh, to as reference pose. Uh, make sure that's selected anyways. And now what you can do is you can import the morph targets as well. So we're going to import the morph targets in this case. Make sure you have that selected. Now, if you also have import materials and import textures selected along with import uh, morph targets it's going to take quite a while to import um, you can import those separately if you want you can uh, select uh, import morph targets and then deselect these materials and then you can import it again and you can select these materials and deselect import morph targets it's a little bit faster uh, but since we're just going to fast forward all the import parts anyways uh, in this tutorial we'll have them both selected and maybe take about 15 20 minutes so let's go ahead and just keep all those selected. Now, because we're importing the uh, mesh, we don't need to select import animation uh, in this case. So let's just go ahead with those settings and we'll select import all. 
and it's going to import in the mesh with all of the individual uh, morph targets. And we'll come back in a couple of minutes here when this is finished uh, compiling or when this is finished importing, and we'll talk about some other material stuff. All right, so once your character is in and everything has been compiled and imported, you can find the skeletal mesh, uh, the character skeletal mesh. We have Tomb, Leader, uh, Tomb Lady skeletal mesh right here. So let's just double click the skeletal mesh and take a look. So on the left hand side, we have all of our characters materials here. Uh, in Persona, we have uh, a number of different uh, materials, including materials for the body, holster, and everything like that. And on the right hand side, we have all of the uh, morph targets that we imported previously. So if we focus on our character's face, first of all, you'll notice that there's a little bit of an issue with her eyelashes and her hair is a little bit chunky as well. It's a little bit different than it was in iClone. Now we'll take a look at that in a little bit, but first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, blend shapes. So you can see when I automatically, uh, when I start moving these blend shapes, we go back to the original uh, mesh without any textures. And so it's compiling all these textures slowly and you can, you know, mess around with all these uh, different morph targets uh, to see, you know, that's similar to the uh, morph target we had uh, in the previous tutorial where we raised her cheeks there and there's a number of different uh, you know, morph targets you can use. And this will basically just compile all the different shaders for your character. It's looking kind of freaky right now here. Anyways, let's just go out of that uh, right now and let's go back and just import our character skeletal mesh into uh, the project right here. So there we go. And we'll just press the F key to focus on her there and just pan around here real quick. So what we're going to do first is take a look at the character's uh, eyelashes. So just ignore the fact that she's kind of looking pretty evil right now with those black eyes. They're still compiling. Let's take a look at her uh, eyelash material first, since her eyelashes have already compiled. So what we need to do is find the eyelash material down here. And you can see we have the eyelash right there, material. Let's go ahead and just double click that. And this will open up the material graph for our eyelashes. And in the material graph, we have this diffuse and we have this uh, specular node. Now, what you want to do for most uh, stuff that comes from Character Creator when you're importing it into Unreal is make sure you select the main node right here and then go over to material and from blend mode, change it from opaque to masked. And that'll open up an opacity mask channel right here. Uh, you can just connect that from your alpha uh, channel or alpha node to the opacity mask right here. And you also want to make sure you select two-sided. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us masking for our material. You can see right here, now this is our new eyelash material. And if we kind of just minimize this a little bit and move over to the right slightly, we can go ahead and save this. And once we finish saving, you'll be able to see the eyelash update. All right, there you go. So there's our character's uh, eyelashes the way they should be. So let's focus now on the hair. So we need to find the front hair material right here, which is uh, right here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a little bit of a different view of her. Uh, over on this side, you can see the chunks that are kind of hanging down there. We want to fix that. So let's double click on the front hair material and go into our material graph here. We can scroll our mouse button in to, to zoom in on our, our different nodes here. And we'll just kind of place these uh, in an organized fashion. And again, do the same thing. Front hair, change from opaque to uh, opaque. Uh, to masked rather, and then just uh, click on two-sided, make sure that's selected. Take in your uh, alpha channel to your opacity mask there, and we should be good to go. We can just uh, go ahead and save this, and once we save it, we'll be able to see the difference on the hair. There you go, so that's the way the hair should be. We get a much more uh, detailed look for the hair. Now you'll notice that the back part of the hair, the ponytail, is actually separate, and the specularity is a little bit off. Let's go ahead and adjust that at this point. So let's go to our tail material, which is the ponytail material, and double click that. And you'll notice this one is missing a specular map. We only have a single diffuse. So let's uh, scroll in again real quick here and select our tail node and change from opaque to masked and to two sided and plug in our alpha channel to the opacity mask. But then we can go ahead and find the specular map in our asset manager. Now, if you recall in iClone, basically the hair um, came in two separate parts, but they, they shared the same specular map. So what we can do is we can find the specular map for the front hair, and that is right here. You can see it's a specular looking map, uh, monochromatic. Let's just click and drag that material directly into our, uh, our material graph right there. So there's a specular, and then we can just go ahead and plug that directly in to our specular uh, node there. 
and let's minimize this a little bit so we can see the difference when we save it. There we go. So you can see the nice looking uh, material uh, on the ponytail as well. All right, so hair and eyelashes are taken care of. Now let's go ahead and focus on the character's skin now because it's actually looking a little bit flat. So what we want to do here is we want to add some specularity to this skin. And we can do that by boosting up the specular maps, uh, the specular texture maps on our character's face. So the facial specular map is right here. We can just double click that and it comes up with a little bit of a different uh, window this time. And you can see we have all these options here for brightness, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm going to do is just take the, uh, let's zoom in a little bit on the face first. There we go. And let's take the brightness on this and adjust it from one to something like 20 and press enter. You can see when we do that, we get a lot more specularity on the character's face. We get a much more realistic look. You can even see if we, oh, if we zoom in not that close, uh, you can see the pores and the specular um, highlights, you know, emphasizing the skin's pores and everything like that. So a lot of fine detail in there if you increase the specularity enough. And it really, of course, it really depends on your lighting as well. We can adjust the lighting later. But you can see now the body is uh, retaining the same uh, specularity. It's separate from the head. So we need to find the specular map for the body as well. And that happens to be this one right here. Uh, specular maps are normally pretty easy to find due to their monochromatic appearance. Let's change this brightness to 40. And you can see on the 40, we have a nice uh, specular reflection off of her collarbone. Maybe like she's a little bit sweaty or, or running. But we can also, you know, take that up or take that down as well. And we'll just close down that material right there. And if we maybe just uh, go to our skylight, we can uh, go to our details for our skylight here. Maybe take down the intensity. And you can see the specular highlights a little bit better under uh, this kind of lighting. We get that really nice um, look, uh, much more realistic than the flat look that we had before. Now let's focus finally on our character's belt. So I'm going to go down to the holster right here. And in iClone, we sort of had an aged uh, brown looking uh, holster belt uh, thing going on. So let's find our holster material, holster one right here, and let's double click on that and see if we can uh, blend something in in our material uh, graph right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and what I want to do is with the base color, we're going to blend in our diffuse map with a uh, blend map that I'm going to import. So I'm going to go to my desktop here and under production resources, I have some blend maps. I'm going to take this blend 02 and simply click and drag it into Unreal, and we're going to drop into the character folder right there. There we go. All right, now we can find our uh, texture uh, graph right here, our, map, our material graph. And let's go ahead and just click and drag that blend map directly in there. And now, so we have this blend map, which will show up in just a sec. There we go. And now we need to create a blend node. So I'm going to right click and type in blend. And we're going to be using a blend overlay. Whoops, you just chose the wrong one there. Let's go ahead and delete this one blend overlay there we go let's select it with our mouse and what i want to do is uh with the uh plug this one in here to the blend v3 on the bottom there and we can also plug this one into the base v3 and alt click over here to remove that connection and then select these to connect them together so now we have this blend but it's still like you know black we want we want to get more of a brownish color so because this diffuse is, um, or rather this diffuse map is basically just pure black, we can actually replace this entire map with a separate, with a single color. Uh, normally what you'd want to do is go into Photoshop and brown it up a little bit, but we can actually just take a really quick shortcut here by right clicking and adding a constant three vector. We'll just type in const, and that'll bring up our constant three vector. Let's delete the diffuse map and we'll Double click on this swatch right here and let's try and find a nice, uh, first of all, we want to make sure we toggle gamma corrected uh, previewing there. Let's find a nice rich brown color right there. You can see the old and the new on the top right. Uh, I think that kind of looks good right about there. Nice rich brown color. And we'll plug this one in to our base right there. And now we're going to have a sort of uh, material like this you can still you can see we still have the normal maps right there with the uh, screws and everything like that but now we have this you know aged uh, looking uh, texture right here so let's go ahead and save that and take a look at the difference that it makes all right so you can see it looks uh, pretty cool I mean you know the the color might be a little bit light but we can always adjust that later on 
I like the look that we have around the uh, holster right here, that kind of aged uh, blend right there. Uh, and that's pretty good. That's pretty good for what we want. All right, so that's about it for this tutorial. What we're going to be doing in the next tutorial is finally applying some animation to our character. And we're going to be creating a state machine and having her run and walk and prance around the scene. And also a little bit more information here. Unreal actually has some really excellent tutorials on their YouTube channel that I'd recommend checking out. I'll put them in the description for this video. Uh, they go into a lot more detail in particular aspects of what we're going to be doing in this tutorial and in the next tutorial uh, in particular. So I'd recommend checking those out. And you can also check out our forums at forum.relusion.com if you need more help as well. And uh, make sure you stay tuned for the next tutorial. And thank you for watching.